I don't know. This is show and tell about galvanometers, motors, speakers, things that the title of this is fun things you can do with a magnetic field because obviously there are a lot of fun things we can do. Um, the first and most mundane is, and I don't know if you remember it, but when I had this thing all set up, okay, and I had this little galvanometer deflecting like that, okay, that thing is a galvanometer. It's a very, very sensitive thing that measures a current flowing through it. It'll measure it either way. If you put, send the current one way, it'll deflect positively. The other way, it'll deflect negatively. Okay, so um, the way these things work is that basically you have to have a magnet. Okay, you have to have a magnetic field. And if you look at this thing, what we have is a loop of wire inside the magnetic field. And if the current flows through this loop, it's going up this side and down this side. Right? Now everybody get out your right hand. Current flowing up. Which way is the magnetic field? Well, it's from north to south, so the magnetic field is this way. And on this side of the wire, the magnetic force is into the page. And on this side of the wire, well, fingers down, magnetic field from <coughs> north to south. The force is out of the page. And if you take a loop like that, and you push this side this way, and this side this way, the loop is going to rotate. Yeah. In fact, we used to calculate the torque exerted on the loop, but now we don't even know what torque is in IB. Okay? So what's going to happen here is if we send the current through this thing, this needle is going to just deflect like that. And then we have to have a spring that's providing some sort of a return force. And the more current that flows, the more torque there is, and the more the needle deflects like that. Okay? Um, let me pass this guy around. Here it is. Okay? This is a voltmeter that somebody destroyed electrically. Okay, so somewhere in this nice little loop, um, there is a gap, and current no longer flows through, and it doesn't work. Um, please don't, somebody like did macrame on the needle one year, don't do that. Okay, you can pull it out and see how difficult it is to make a voltmeter. All you need are resistors, and you can see that the different scales correspond to different resistors. It's very, very simple. Okay, but if you look in there, the outer casing is what makes the magnetic field, and then when you look in there, the, instead of one loop, of course, they have many, many loops of wire, which makes it that many times more sensitive. I'll pass that around, and you can see you can see that there's like a weak little spring that makes it go back. Be very, very gentle with that. Okay. Um, there's a galvanometer. Here's a picture of what you're seeing. This side is just the north pole. This side's the south pole. And then instead of one winding, it's many windings. And then if you look in there, you can even see the little spring. They've got like a little watch spring in there that's providing the return force, OK? OK, and then before we go on to that, uh, let me turn this off, OK, um, and draw a picture of a hard drive, right? Because a hard drive, seek arm, a hard drive seek arm, and I think I've got a, I have a hard drive here. This is a fail. Why don't I have it here? I'll go grab it. Okay. Weissing girls want to get to my show and tell. Okay, so this is a hard drive. This thing spins. Okay, this thing is the read arm, right? Okay, this thing seeks out the files. Okay, and so to find the files, this thing just has to move this way. This is another thing that acts just like a galvanometer. Okay, so and what, what's missing here is that, of course, this loop of wire, the galvanometer loop there, is. A, oriented the wrong way, or it seems to be. And then B, the magnets that actually make it work have been stolen because I like these magnets. Probably these magnets are holding my oven door shut. Okay? Stop. Thank you. Okay? These are probably holding my oven door um, shut at this very moment. Okay? I took them off, and I, I just love these magnets. They're extremely strong. Here's how they work. For the hard drive magnets, they've got a, um, if we look at it, Okay, this is like a north pole, and this side here is a south pole, and there's like a demarcation like that. So when you pull these magnets out, one side's north, one side's south, which is why they stick like crazy to metal, right? 
I mean, you can hold uh, you know, a 60 pound child to your refrigerator with a hard drive magnet. They're, they're just so, so strong, right? Okay. The way it works is that we've got a loop of wire like this. Okay. And then this thing is, of course, attached to the seat arm, right? And there's a pivot point like this. Now, if we get the current flowing, say, clockwise in this loop, okay, think about which way the force is. Well, a North Pole magnet, remember, North Pole means that flux lines are coming out of the page. Yeah? South Pole means that flux lines are going into the page, yes? So consider this loop, okay? And I'm talking about this. I'm trying to draw a picture of this. Okay, so there's our little seek loop, right? Think of that thing in this situation, right? Which way is the force on this guy? Well, current is this way, magnetic field is that way. The force on this guy is which way? To the right. Which way is the force on this guy? Well, it's, I can't do it, ouch! Okay, current is flowing this way, field is now into the page, force is also to the right. To the right. Okay, it would be bad if they were opposing each other, which they would if they didn't do that with the domains, if they didn't go north pole, south pole, right? So, these things become this incredibly strong galvanometer. They're able to go lickety split to where they need to go, okay? In fact, a friend of mine uses these to launch water droplets for high-speed photography. He does high-speed photography of water droplets colliding with the surface of the water, and he uses these things to just do the really high-speed stuff. Yeah? Well, what would happen if you needed to go back? You oh, you send the current the other way. Okay. Now, here's a mystery that I, I always wanted to know, because if you take one of these things out and you try to use it, that is, you find those little wires and you send a current in there, okay? This thing goes, if you send a current, just the slightest current through there, it just goes bang to one side and it doesn't stop anywhere in the middle. And if you send the slightest current in there the other way, it just goes bang to the other side and it never stops in the middle. Yet when you look at the hard drive, when we have one of these that you can look at working, okay, it sits there and stops in the middle all the time. It's like going, right, right? How does it, well, here's how it works. It's, it's a, yeah, it's pulsed. It's actually, um, it's actually, there's a very, um, there's a lot of circuitry running this thing, right? What's missing is there's actually one more circuit board than you see there. There's all sorts of circuitry there, and the way it works is this. It's got a sensor. It knows where it is on the head. In fact, it's got a little reed sensor, and I believe it's the bottom of the platter, of all the platters, has the tracks written on it. So it knows instantly where it is, and if it says, if it needs to seek to the outside, it sends it as fast as it can to the outside. It says, go out fast, 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 go out, right? When it, when it, and then it's saying, it's looking at where it is, right? It's like an elevator. Head to the ninth floor, right? And then it watches the, the, the reading. And when you get to the ninth floor, it stops you real fast. Yeah? Okay? So it's, it sends it flying toward where it needs to go. As soon as it gets there, it reverses the current and stops it. Isn't that wild? And then it shuts off the current. Because inertia will just keep it where it is, yeah? What if it drifts off the track? It knows that. It knows that you've drifted off the track and it sends you back. Yeah? And so it's constantly looking at where you are and it's sending pulses to, to, to send you out there. Because anything else would be too slow, right? Optical discs are, are way too slow when they read. They've, they've got to move very slowly and incrementally, okay? So these things have to be able to go very quickly to all different parts of the disc, which is kind of a cool thing. All right, so that's another galvanometer. I'll pass that guy around. And you can look, look at how it's engineered. Notice it's made of aluminum. Notice they've hollowed out the seek part to make it lighter because it has less inertia, it can seek faster. Question? Solid state drives, Solid state drives are just a big memory block. Yeah, it's, just like it's just memory. Yeah. Okay. Um, the next thing, a DC motor. A DC motor. Here is a DC motor. And it is not a good DC motor, but it is an easy DC motor to understand. Okay. What we have is this side here on the left side is a south pole magnet. And on the right side, there is a north pole magnet. Okay, we have a south pole magnet and a north pole magnet. Let me just get a little bit tighter on that thing. Okay. So this side is south, this side is north. Now, in the middle, we have, I think it's called an armature. Okay, this is a magnet. Doesn't that look like a magnet in the middle? Yeah. Yes, that thing in the middle is an electromagnet. Now, if the motor starts off like this, what we do is we send electricity, and there's a little sliding thing that lets the electricity flow down in here, and it makes this side a north pole, and it makes this side a south pole. Well, what, what's it going to want to do? 
Yeah, it's going to want to switch.